Recently I became the first person to pass the CPTS exam by Hack the Box, and so I wanted to make this video to share my experience with other people who might be interested in taking this exam. In this video, I'd like to go over the course, the exam, the report, which is part of the exam, tips and tricks I have for the course and the exam, and I see the comparison being made a lot between CPTS and OSCP, so I'll go over the differences in my opinion and maybe I can help you make that decision. The course is an entry-level course geared towards entry-level pen testers who want to gain the necessary skills to operate as a intermediate penetration tester. There are 28 modules in total, I'll put them on the screen right now. They try to cover a lot of information, so we have, for example, the basic web attacks, SQL injection, file upload, file inclusion, XSS, command injections, login brute forcing, yada yada. We have privilege escalation modules for Windows and Linux. We have Active Directory modules, so they cover LLMNR, Response Spoofing, ACL Attacks, Bloodhound, DC Sync, Curb Roasting, AS Rep Roasting, Password Spraying, and aside from that there are a couple of informational modules to teach you how to carry out a pen test or how to write a report in a professional manner. The format of the course is... There's the penetration tester role, right? Or the, the path, the job role path. And it's built up from these modules. And you need to complete 100% of these modules before you can start the exam. One thing I don't really like about uh, Hack the Boxes Academy, but yeah, you have to complete 100% of the modules. We could take a look at attacking common services, for example. This is what a module will look like. It's built up from these sections. And for example, in the case of attacking common services, we have the different services as different chapters in the module, right? We have an introduction, we go through each service and how you would go about attacking it. And then we have these skill assessments at the end of the module, which kind of test that you actually learn the contents of the module. Every module has skill assessments. You have to pass them to complete the module. Some of these sections are interactive, so they'll have a green cube next to them if they're interactive. That usually means there's a VM at the bottom that you spin up and you either follow the attack that was uh, explained in this section, or maybe you test something similar, and then you submit the flag to complete the section. Uh, some of the sections aren't interactive, they don't have a cube next to their name. It's purely reading in that section. How long did it take me to complete this course? So, Hack the Box predicts it should take 41 days to complete this path. In reality, it took me 49 days. I started on August 12th, 2022, and I ended on September 30th. The reason it took me a bit longer is I work full time, and I wasn't really in a rush to finish this course, I was taking my time. One thing to note is CBBH and CPTS, 11 modules overlap. I already completed these because I did the CBBH before the CPTS, so I really only did 17 new modules. It's definitely possible to do it much quicker than 41 days. It might take you a bit longer. It, it depends uh, how much you work, how much free time you really have to dedicate towards this. The format of the exam is an external pen test of an organization with a large Active Directory network. Uh, you need to gain 85 points to pass, and you get these points by submitting user flags and root flags, or administrator flags on Windows machines. The exam covers almost everything covered in the modules, so there isn't really something which was just left out of the exam. Almost everything came and was tested. The exam was a bit more challenging than the skill assessments at the end of each module, so it required me to do a bit of googling because I ran into some web applications that I never saw before, weird file formats that I wasn't sure what to do with. Hack the Box give you 10 days to both do the exam and to submit the report. Personally, it took me 5 days. I'll have to blur this out, but it took me 4 days to get 85 points, which is a passing grade, right? but I'm a completionist, so I wanted to get 100%, so I took an extra fifth day to get 100%, and then I wrote the report and submitted it, and I think the next day it was already graded. During the exam, I took a lot of notes. I can't show them for obvious reasons, but I had the attack chain, which is a list of all the commands you have to run in a specific order 
to reach whatever point I was in the exam, right? So this is super useful in case you need to reset the environment. It's super useful for the report because for the report you need to have all the exact commands you ran. So you can just copy paste them in. I had a list of all the credentials I gathered, all the user accounts and their corresponding passwords. Because you, I think you collect like a hundred throughout the course of the exam. It's, you, you can't memorize it. You need to have it all in one place. And of course I had this time log here. Apart from that, I took screenshots of every single step in the attack chain because it saves you a lot of time. I obviously can't go through my personal report. It was 98 pages long, but it's based on this template, which uh, was posted in the Discord channel and is given to you when you're taking the exam. So we can go through that really quick. Hackbox give you this template and you need to fill out a few various things. You need to make an executive summary, which is for uh, management level typically. Uh, in this case, it's just for practice, most likely. Uh, you need to fill out the scope of all of the subnets you discover throughout the test. You have to fill out all the findings. These are not the steps of the attack chain. These are the vulnerabilities which allowed you to uh, progress throughout the exam, basically. And then you need to have a walkthrough. And this is where the attack chain, the notes, and the screenshots from before become super useful. You need to have a list of all commands and screenshots of the entire attack chain from initial to domain compromise. You need to have the whole thing covered. All exact commands. They want you to have remediation information, so what they should do to prevent the same attack from happening in the future, right? Uh, then you have to go through all the various vulnerabilities in depth. You have to give it a CVE number, CVSS score, you can calculate that online, description, security impact, the affected domain and computer, and then you need to give some information on how they can fix it specifically. It's very much like a real report. It gets a bit boring to write though. <laughs> At the end, there's an appendix. You have to put down all the hosts you discovered, all the subdomains you discovered, the hosts you exploited, the users you compromised. I don't think you had to include the password, only the username. If you made any changes to the hosts and then didn't fix them afterwards, you should write it down here. Personally, I left this empty. And then you have to include all the flags you found. That's the report. It's not very complicated. It does get very long because the attack chain in this exam is quite long. Like I said, my report was 98 pages long. 80% of it was screenshots though, so it's not that much writing. Don't worry too much about it. And you have 10 days. It took me around 8 hours to write this report, I think, from start to finish. Okay, so in this section I'd like to go over some tips and tricks that can help you during the course and during the exam. Uh, the first one would be to take detailed notes with commands that you can copy. This is uh, during the course, I mean. And it comes in use when you're taking the exam or when you're on a real test. So you don't have to Google everything, look back through the modules. If you have all the commands already in your notes, it's, it's very useful. Uh, I can show you my notes, for example. This is the attacking common services module, right? And so I have the FTP service, SMB, SQL, RDP, DNS, SMTP, all of these services and the various attack types. And I have all the commands, right? They're ready to copy paste. Just change the IP address, change the username. It makes things a lot faster if you have it all ready for you, right? My next tip would be to use Academy's search feature during the exam. In case you uh, run into a roadblock, you're not sure how to continue. Let's say, for example, I found the IPMI service, right? I can search IPMI in the search bar. I see it's in the footprinting module. I get directed to the correct section. I can see exactly what information the module has on this service, what commands there are. So there's, for example, the Metasploit module, IPMI, there's the IPMI dump hashes module, and I can uh, try these in the exam to see if it's relevant or not. My third tip would be to take screenshots and write down the exact attack chain during the exam. 
I already said this in the exam and reporting portions of this video, but I'll say it again. It's very important that you write the report as you're taking the exam. It's going to save you a ton of time. Just do it. Just do it. It's a good idea. <laughs> uh, my fourth tip would be to store all credentials from the exam in one spot because otherwise it gets very messy. You have to scroll up and down through your notes. You're just wasting time trying to find someone's password, right? If it's all in one spot, you can spray it a lot easier. You can look things up a lot quicker. My fifth tip is to attempt the Attacking Enterprise Networks module blind as a sort of way to gauge your preparedness for the exam. This one specifically. Attacking Enterprise Networks, right? Uh, in this module, it takes you through the whole pen test of a fictionary organization from external all the way to domain compromise. And if you can solve this module completely blind without help, it resembles the exam in a lot of ways. It's easier, of course, but if you can solve this blind, then you'll do just fine on the exam. My sixth tip is to join the Hack the Box Discord. It's uh, very helpful if you're doing regular Hack the Box machines, but for the Academy as well. There are these two channels, Modules and CBTS. If you get stuck on something, you can ask a question. Someone's going to help you out. Maybe someone already ran into the problem before you. You can scroll up, look for it. Uh, the creators of the course and the exam are active here. So like uh, Mr. Ben, 21.4YD, Cryolite, Plaintext, LTN Bob, they're all active here. They all regularly answer questions. The last thing I'd like to cover in this video is, of course, the differences between CPTS and the OSCP. It's a comparison I've seen many times. Everyone wants to know what the difference is, which one they should take first, which one they should uh, take if they can only do one. Let's go through it. First off, uh, pricing, right? CPTS is, uh, if you're a student, it's 7 euros a month plus 180 euros. Uh, so it's around 200 euros to do the entire course and the exam. If you're not a student, the path costs around 2,000 cubes. And there's various plans you can take. I think the cheapest way you can really do it is if you take the $58 a month uh, plan for two months, that'll give you 2,000 cubes and cubes don't expire. So that should cover the entire course. And then you buy the exam separate, that's 180. In total, it'll run you about 300. OSCP, on the other hand, so the course, if you take it for three months and then you get the one exam attempt, it's going to run you $1,500. The other option that Defensive Security now has is Learn One. They're a subscription module. I think that's like uh, $2,500 for a year. Right now it's on discount, so it's only $2,000. Uh, it's definitely a lot more than CPTS, right? Access to course materials. So in CPTS, the modules which you complete 100% remain unlocked forever. So you can always go back and look at the content of the course. OSCP, on the other hand, you pay either for three months or for a year of lab access, right? The PDF itself, when I took OSCP, it was just a PDF. Now they have an online uh, content platform. As far as I know, you can still download a PDF, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Regarding the exam, in CPTS, you have the 10-day period to do both the exam and the report. In OSCP, you have 24 hours to do the exam and then 24 hours to do the report. The environment was a lot smaller in OSCP, of course. When I took it, it was only five machines. They changed the format of the course at the end of 2021. Now there's an Active Directory portion, so it may be a bit larger, but it certainly is smaller than the network in CPTS because you only have 24 hours, right? Uh, I remember it being extremely stressful. I worked like uh, 22 hours straight, fell straight to sleep. <laughs> it's a lot more relaxed in the CPTS environment. In terms of content, like I said, OSCP was changed at the end of 2021. I took it in 2020. So I'm going to have to go off the syllabus right now. In OSCP, they cover buffer overflows for Windows, uh, which isn't covered in CPTS. They cover client-side attacks with Microsoft Word, so VBA macros. There's a bit of antivirus evasion. 
uh, the lab to practice on is like 100 plus machines. There is no such lab in CPTS. One thing I didn't like is the exam in OSCP was almost entirely public CVEs that you can find on Exploit TB. So I think uh, I think almost every step in the exam, you could search it up on Google and there was some public exploit. In CPTS, it's not like that. Something CPTS does that OSCP does not do. Uh, in CPTS, more web attacks are covered. Uh, in OSCP, there are only very basic attacks. In CPTS, there are a couple more. And I think the exam was a bit more realistic for CPTS. Uh, it was from completely external to domain compromise, just like a real pen test might be. In terms of proctoring, CPTS is not proctored whatsoever. Whereas OSCP, as you might know, is proctored. You have to share your screen and a face camera for the duration of the entire exam, not the reporting period. Feedback. People who review the CPTS exam attempts will provide you feedback if you submit a report, regardless if you pass or fail. I can show you the feedback that I received. Okay, so this is my feedback, right? Uh, congratulations on passing, your report was nice. And then some tips that I could have uh, applied to make my report a bit better, right? This nice uh, feedback was written by Mr. Ben. He's the head of uh, training at Hack the Box Academy. And apparently he reviewed my exam attempt. OSCP, you don't get any feedback if you pass or you fail. Uh, you just get an email that says you passed or you failed. In terms of retakes, in CPTS you buy exam vouchers, which include two exam attempts, or one attempt and one retake. You can take the attempt whenever you want. The retake, you must take it within 14 days of failing the first attempt, otherwise it expires. Uh, further retakes, if you fail the retake, you have to buy new vouchers for $180 each. So basically, two attempts, $180. Uh, in OSCP, each exam attempt costs $250, and you have to wait for the first retake four weeks, eight for the second, and 12 weeks for the third, fourth, etc. In terms of popularity, the number of Hack the Box cert holders right now is 67, which is uh, very low compared to OSCP. Uh, the number of OSCP passes is unknown. Offensive security doesn't release this information. I searched on LinkedIn, I saw 8,000 results, but various estimates online put this number between 15 and 30,000 people who have passed the OSCP. Could be higher, could be lower, no one really knows. In any case, it's a lot higher than CBTS. Much more people know what the OSCP is, but fair enough, the CPTS just came out and offensive security has been around for a long time. In terms of the course and exam environments, so CPTS provides you a pwn box, which is a Parrot Linux uh, VM that you can access through the browser for both the modules and for the exam. Whereas in the OSCP, you have to have your own VM. They want you to use Kali Linux if you want to receive any support. One specific con to CPTS is that you have to complete 100% of the modules to start the exam. I don't personally like this very much because a couple of the modules in CPTS are basic informational level modules which were just very tedious to work through and you didn't really learn a lot from them, or I didn't personally. In the OSCP there is no such requirement. You can not touch the labs at all and take the exam. You probably shouldn't. But you could do it if you wanted, right? So guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope it helped. Uh, in the future, I would like to make more videos explaining other certifications, for example, CBBH by Hack the Box as well. If you're interested in seeing that, uh, smash like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. And I hope to see you later.